Good morning, church. We just pray this morning. I just, I just invite you to join with me in prayer. That Father, we just declare that right now that whatever space that we are in is a sanctuary, God. Lord, that in your presence there's fullness of joy. At your right hand there are pleasures evermore. God, you say that you will inhabit the praises of your people. Lord, you say that you are enthroned on the praises of your people. So God, we just declare that this living room, this dorm room, this vehicle that we're in, whatever it is, God, that it is a place of worship, Lord, that we set aside right now for you. Lord, for you, for your presence. God, for your spirit. Lord, for us to adore you and give you glory and honor and praise. I don't know how I get to bless you, God. I have nothing in me, no authority or no power that can bless you. But God, you are blessed in the same way, Lord, that a spouse is blessed when we give them that special card that we didn't just pick up from a store. We didn't just read words from a book or lyrics from a screen, but God, we wrote a special love letter that came out of our own heart, even if it was simple, even if it involved macaroni and Elmer's glue, God. <laughs> Lord, we gave it, we created it, and it's just for you and you alone this morning. So I just invite you just to worship him in just a way that is just personal for you as you just focus your heart and your mind and your soul and your strength on Jesus this morning. I searched the world but it couldn't fill me A man's empty praise And treasures that fade Are never enough And then you came along And you put me back together And every desire Is now satisfied
sing. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Lord, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, praise the Lord. Father, let's give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Hallelujah. God, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your manifest presence, Lord. And Lord, we're trusting you today to minister to every need in everybody's heart, just like we know you can. You're a mighty God, and we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. God bless you. Those in the room this morning, you may be seated. Those online, good morning. I'm Pastor Preston here at the Bridge Church, if we've not met. And uh, we welcome you online today, and we trust most of our local body today has been asked to attend church online. And uh, we thank you for doing that for us, and I hope you all enjoyed sleeping in and not being here to volunteer and all the good stuff that we got up early for. Amen? So anyway, we welcome you this morning, and uh, we're thankful for our worship team. Thank you guys for your faithfulness. And uh, we're just excited today about what God's doing in our church and in this region, the River Valley. God has been good to us. And uh, I'm just going to go to the Lord in prayer right now. Uh, to me, they're, they're almost in the River Valley. We get many, many reports. Our church is spread out from an hour's drive from here in, in several directions. And uh, we get reports from people all over. And it's almost like the Omicron variant is a super spreader. And I, I just like us to join our hearts in faith today. Those of you that are at home right now, I'm just asking you to make room in your environment. If you, you know what I always say, if you're driving, be careful, keep one eye open and one hand on the wheel, right? But I believe the Holy Spirit can help us to join our hearts together in faith. And I believe God, I believe that it's in God's will to cleanse this area, amen? And I want you to agree with me in prayer this morning. Father, we thank you. Thank you that we have a God that hears our heart cry, that, that knows right where we live, right where we, what we need in our lives. And Lord, we lay the river valley at your feet, Lord. This is your land, Lord. We've declared that. This uh, region has been prophesied over to, to bring revival to the state of Arkansas. Many, many wonderful and different times. And so, Lord, under the authority of your government today, we come against sickness and disease in this region, and we speak healing into people's bodies. And we ask you, Lord, this is not medically science correct, but I'm asking you to take the power out of COVID in this area and any other sickness or disease and bring healing to people's bodies speedily and the transition of disease would be minimized and nullified. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen this morning. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Philippians 4 says, make your requests be made known unto God and then thank him for it. Amen. So we encourage you, don't be fearful. Don't be anxious about what's going on in the land. Operate under the promises of God's word and make your requests be made known to the Lord and then thank him for what he's going to do. Amen. Amen. The uh, online crowd this morning, we're especially thankful for you. And we just ask you to continue to connect with us in this room. Already this morning, there's been a strong presence of the Lord in the room as the worship team was uh, preparing and ministering to the presence of the Lord. So we're praying that that translates right to where you're seated today, right where you're standing. And I, I would encourage you when it's a worship song, stand up and worship with us, okay? And engage. And uh, that's called the sacrifice of praise, actually. Uh, when it, whenever the word's taught this morning, op open your Bible and take notes and listen and Focus in and make this the best that you can today. I want to receive our morning tithe and offering. And I uh, want to ask everybody to give us unto the Lord 
according to the teaching of his word. And uh, you give joyfully today. Amen. God has been faithful. He's always been faithful to meet the needs of his people. And he's always a step ahead of us. Amen. And I'm thankful for that. God's an on-time God. There are several ways you can give at the bridge, the online group. This mostly focuses on you because most of our church is online today. But you can send it to our P.O. box here at the church. If you have a tithe envelope, you have one at home that's actually a mailer, you can mail it in using that tithe envelope. You can go to our uh, website, thebridgefs.com. Then on the first page you open, there's a little button on the bottom. Click that, and it'll take you through what to do. My phone's laying over here with the volume on. I can hear me talking on the seat right there. I'll fix that in a minute. But there is a Tithely app for the smartphones. You set up an account. You can go to it anytime, and you can donate and make a contribution. Always, for those of you who like to bring it to the church, uh, the north door on the end, 6101, has a mail slot in it and a little screw. Open that, put it in the slot, and pull on the screw to close the door. In case it rains, things won't get wet, okay? I'm going to ask everybody this morning to stand again. We're going to go to the Lord and worship. And I'm just asking you personally, everybody in this room and online, let's make a heart connection with the power of God today and ask God to move in our midst. God bless you as you worship. Thank you, Jesus. James 4, in James chapter 4, verse 7, it says, Submit yourself then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And then in verse 8, it says, Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Lord, I believe you. You are not a man that you should lie. God, you said that if I would draw near to you, that you would draw near to me. So, Father, I just take you at your word, and I just come. Lord, I, I try to draw just by doing something simple that I know that you love because you set up a tabernacle with David that you said would be restored. And in Revelations, we see that you've set up worship, God. They're speaking it. They're declaring it. They each have a harp and a bowl full of the prayers of the saints. So I'm drawing near to you, God, in just one simple way that I know that you like. As I sing these songs and as I declare these things to you, and I pray that you would draw near to us, God, that we would sense and feel, not because I need a feeling, but because it feels good and we love you and we're your children. And sometimes we need to see a smile on our daddy's face and we need a hug. And I just pray, God, that even as we believe that you're cleansing out the sickness, Lord, and giving us authority in this area, God, that in your presence, Lord, is where we find it, Lord, that there's no shadow, there's no darkness, God. So as we worship, God, let this be the act. Let this be, let us be in our living rooms. Maybe it's strategic that we're not just all in one building, that we're spread out all over the River Valley this morning. Because there's little throne rooms, little thrones. It says he's enthroned on the praises of his people. So instead of just one big one rising up, I'm seeing in my spirit one big one. And above this building on 271 South, there's thrones going up all over the river valley and all over the world as you worship with us. Praise God from who? Blessings flow. We're just going to focus on the Lord. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above you, heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Let's do that again. It's just simple. There's churches doing it all over. Let's join with the saints and the angels and sing. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise 
these here mortal creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy to be entertained. I just need you, Lord. All you want is my attention. One glance from my eyes. trust, Lord. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
gave us your spirit now we are close closer than we think creation is growing longing for the unseen here in this moment eternity's close closer than we think what are they singing what is it surrounding me, thunder and light, everything in us, the longing, the ache, the joy with the heavens, the anthem of praise, oh, me. It's Revelations chapter 4.
never stop. See another facet of your beauty, God. See another side of your glory, God. For eternity, for eternity. Blessing and honor and glory and power belong to you alone. Blessing and honor and glory and power belong to you, belong to you. Blessing and honor and glory and power belong to you alone. Blessing and honor and glory and power belong to you, belong to you. Heaven's 
filled with wonder, awestruck wonder at the mention of your name. Lord, I just pray your prayer from Ephesians. Lord, that the eyes of our spirit would be enlightened, that they would be open, that together with all the saints, we'd be able to grasp how high, how deep, how wide is the prayer, is the love of Christ. That a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus would come and would come and open up our eyes to see. Open up my eyes to see your glory, Jesus, your beauty, Lord. Take me up so I can see, just like John the Revelator, God, I want to see you in your glory. Just like Jesus prayed in the garden before the cross, Father, let them see me where I am, let them see me. want to encourage everyone to lift their hands up to the Lord. We're going to go to him in prayer this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we honor you today. Thank you for your presence in this room. And Lord, I know that your manifest presence does not hold any barriers, but right now you're able to just reach out all over the land, all around this globe and this universe. God, you are Lord of all. Father, we pray for Georgia and Lowry's family today in the passing of her mom, Lord, that you would comfort them and give them peace that goes beyond understanding, Lord. Minister to her and her siblings, her family, Father. Do your best work, Lord. We lift them up to you. Father, I just ask, God, uh, for certain people. There's a couple families in our church that are, are battling COVID right now. They're at home, but they need a breakthrough. And uh, Vicki, who's on our worship team is, is struggling and she needs, she needs a breakthrough. Amen. And then the proctors, uh, mom and dad proctor, Charles and Kathy, they need a breakthrough. Come on somebody. I need you to make a connection. There's lots of folks that are out that we get reports. They, they have what I call the crud, right? Cause it's cruddy. You just feel bad. Amen. Father God in Jesus name, I'm asking you to make a difference right now. In Charles and Kathy Proctor and Vicki Ando's body, in Jesus' name, I'm reversing this sickness and disease in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the name above every name. And I command sickness and disease to leave their body in Jesus' name. All the different folks that are dealing with any type of sickness, Lord, 
Don Holloway with the crud, Lord. We lift up Julie, a uh, heart to you, Father God. I ask that you touch her. Julie had surgery and then had to have uh, a kidney stone surgery right behind that. Lord, I want to thank you for touching and strengthening her body. Thank you for moving ahead of her. Her pathway of healing is open to God, intervening a speedy recovery. We'll give you the glory. Got word last week, Pastor Steve Shepard, uh, who pastors on the north side of town, uh, was facing some stomach issues and waiting on tests. Would you just lay your hand right there on your tummy? And ask the Lord to reverse this in his body. God, I thank you for medical science, all the medical professions. We'll, we pray for them that you'd help them and strengthen them in this season, Lord. And we thank you for them, Father. But I know a physician named Jesus, and I'm asking you to go ahead of Pastor Steve and reverse all of this in his body. And whatever it is, I speak healing into him in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's just lift our hands and thank the Lord. Father, we are thankful. We exalt you today. We worship you today. You're a mighty and awesome God. <laughs> and we're just happy to be in your house. We're happy to be in your house online today. And Lord, we're delighted by you and who you are. You're the delight of our heart. So we worship you and praise you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everybody said amen. Amen. God bless you this morning. You may be seated. It's good to have everybody in the room. Good to have all you folks online. This month is Sanctity of Human Life Month, and it is celebrated in different places and in different ways. There was a group that gathered in Washington, D.C. on Friday and had a march and then had a meeting of worship and speakers and all of the above on Friday. And it was safe and peaceful, thank God for that, amen. And uh, not only that, they shared the truth of their personal lives and what God is doing in our nation and I believe in the world to bring a shift to all of us in this realm of sanctity for human lives. This morning, it is my great joy. It's going to be our focus today to bring up information and share with you stuff you may not be aware of. But we're going to, uh, we have with us uh, Christy Robertson from the First Choice Pregnancy Medical Help Center. They're right here in Fort Smith. And she's going to come share their story, uh, what they are doing, and how they are impacting our community to bring about good. Christy, would you come, please? Thank you for being here. Now, give her a hand. Everybody, it's here online, too. Turn this on, Mom. Yeah. So Preston asked me to come, I think, in March of last year, and I immediately said yes. Um, I could not wait to attend this church because this is a church that honors the presence of God, and you let the Holy Spirit just have his way and move. And so I couldn't wait to have an, just an excuse to be here with you guys and worship the Lord. So thank you for having me today. Um, and as I'm standing there worshiping, um, I heard the Lord say, tell your story. Well, I've got this whole thing planned out here, you know, and the Lord will hijack you sometimes. And um, I've learned that I just say yes to him because if you don't say yes to him, sometimes you will end up in the belly of the well for disobedience. And I didn't want that because <laughs> he'll, he's going to take me where he wants me to go anyways, right? So um, three years ago on Sanctity of Life Sunday, I was at church by myself and they announced it's Sanctity of Life Sunday. Well, I didn't even know that was a thing. You know, and it's been going on since the 80s, I think. Ronald Reagan is the one that started this. Um, and there was a panel of women on the stage, and um, they started talking. There were anything from um, people that were there for the foster care system to people that were dealing with adoption agencies, but there was a girl there that worked for the pregnancy center, and she started talking about her abortion story. Well, for months and months, I had been on my knees, Lord, use my story. Well, I have a pretty long story, um, and he could have used any of it, but he picked this one thing that I never wanted to talk about, and that was I have an abortion in my past. Um, and I told the Lord that I would tell this story if he would let me. I did said, okay, well, I can't cry. <laughs> so um, I knew when she started talking about her 
her abortion story, my spirit leapt. And I, I, I knew that I was supposed to reach out to this girl. Um, and she was the director of the pregnancy center, and now I'm the director. Um, so I, before I got out of the parking lot, I messaged her before I chickened out and just didn't do it at all. And I met her for coffee, and I told her my story. And the first thing she did was she signed me up to get healing. So, And it was healing that I didn't know that I needed or even deserved. But I can tell you that one in four women will choose abortion, and 50% of those women will have more than one. So even in this room, it's like I'm one of those women that's had an abortion, and chances are there's another girl in here that's had an abortion as well. But I can tell you that it is the heart of your Heavenly Father to get, to get healing for that um, and to have your own redemption story because someone else's healing is on the other side of your story. So never be afraid to tell your story. And we have an abortion recovery program, and it's wonderful. It's a Bible study, and it's going to lead you through all the things, um, and you're going to get the healing that you need. So, yes. Um, so yesterday marked the 49th anniversary of Roe versus Wade. 49 years. That's a long time for babies to have been killed, a long time. And they estimate that there's approximately 64 million abortions that have been performed since then. But I'm going to tell you that number is probably more like 200 million because states like California and New York, they don't have to report um, abortions. And 50% of abortions are chemical abortions, meaning they take an abortion pill. No state has to report that because these women are not having their abortions in the clinic. They're going home and taking the pill and having their abortions at home on their own. Um, so it's enough. And when I get in my prayer time and I am just in that warrior mode, I'm just marching back and forth. Lord, it's enough. It's enough. It has to end. Um, but as most of you know, in December, um, the Mississippi case, the Dobbs case, went before the Supreme Court. And um, so arguments, this is the first time Roe v. Wade's been heard in a while, but it's actually the first time that it could possibly be overturned. And praise God for that. But we have to, um, it's my understanding that they've already made a decision, but they're not going to announce it until like June or July. So these Supreme Court justices have until June or July to change their mind. So it's my prayer every single day that these Supreme Court justices will have the Holy Spirit will come upon them. The fear of the Lord will come upon them and they know that their life depends on overturning this. Now, I know in my spirit that it's going to happen, and I can tell you how I got confirmation. Um, it was December 22nd of this past year. Um, we're at church, and I'm listening to the Christmas story. Well, I've heard this story every year for my whole life, you know? And so, but in Matthew chapter 3, verse 19, it says, After Herod died, the angel of the Lord appeared again to Joseph in a dream while he was still in Egypt, saying, Go back to the land of Israel and take the child and his mother with you, for those who sought to kill the child are dead. And my, I just had that, that aha moment. And just like Preston said, it has been prophesied that revival is coming to this area. The manifest presence, the glory of God is coming to this area. But the men that are, what were these men doing? They were killing the babies. So we have to stop killing the babies for the manifest presence of God, the glory of God to come back. And so when I heard that, I just, it was like confirmation from the Lord. It's going to end. So when Roe v. Wade is overturned, there are 21 states, including the state of Arkansas, that have trigger bills in effect. Um, that means that we have bills in effect that is going to make abortion illegal in our state. Praise God for that. But we don't have, I think as a church, we need to be ready to be the church. As a church, we need to be ready to win. Because we don't, do we have the infrastructure in place to take care of the baby boom that's going to happen in 2023? I, I don't know that we do. 
So I was at a, a conference in, in Colorado just a, a few months ago, back in November, and there was a lady there from Texas. And, you know, they have the heartbeat bill that went into effect. And so you can't have an abortion past six weeks. Well, most women don't find out they're pregnant until they're about six weeks. That's when they start having symptoms or they've missed their period or whatever. And, uh, you know, and I'm just like, yeah, I was talking, I was like, this heartbeat bill, are you guys excited about this? Because it ends abortion. And she was just like a little bit stressed about it. She's like lives in a small town with two daycares and a two-year waiting list for each daycare. And since the, that heartbeat bill went into effect, it's like 8,000 babies have been saved. Praise God. But it's like, okay, so what are we going to do with all these babies? So as a church, we are the church. You're the church. I'm the church. We're all the church. We have to be ready to come alongside these women and support them, whether it's financially. Um, honestly, it's going to be like, it should be more like a discipleship program. Um, there are 3,000 pregnancy centers Within the United States, there's 400,000 churches. So even if a church took on one or two women at a time, and it was more like the Great Commission, and we came alongside them, and we discipled them to be parents, to show them what it's like to serve the Lord, it's not like we're, just, we're not just saving babies, we're raising children here. And we've got to remember that, you know? So got some notes here to try to keep me on track, but I feel like I've already got off track. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> um, I think I got it here. So, and it is, it's like if I could have a vision for all of this, it would just be linking these girls, maybe men and women couples, to a church and just allowing the church to come alongside them if it was one couple or two couples. And I know that you guys probably have some, some nurturing women in here that would love to do that. And it's like just sending them to a safe place just to show them anything from how to do their finances to um, how to teach their children now to come up in the Lord or um, whatever it is, you know, and let's change some generations and let's break some generational curses. I mean, this is our opportunity to be the church. This is our opportunity to, to break some chains off of people that they really didn't realize, you know, that they had. So, and I'm going to leave you with this verse, and it is, um, I like to read from the Passion Translation because honestly, the way it's worded, it's feel, I feel like it's like from the heart of God himself. But it's James 1.27 and it says, true spirituality that is pure in the eyes of our Father God is to make a difference in the lives of orphans and widows in their troubles and to refuse to be corrupted by the world's values. you amen those online and uh christy if you would i'm gonna do an interview with you You can lay your stuff down warren to help you isn't he a good husband amen um i want you to give us a little more information about your center where you're located i'm amazed that you did all that talking we didn't hear anything about the mobile ultrasound unit okay. <laughs> let's take a moment seriously let's take yeah. a moment and talk a as executive director, you have a vision in your heart for your team of people. Sure. Would you tell us a little bit about the center where you're located yeah. and some of the stuff you do? So we have a brick and mortar, and it's on the corner of 47th and Grand. And we have been in the River Valley for about 31 years. Um, during that time, we've changed names. We've changed locations. And so pe a lot of people just don't know that we're there, that we exist. Um, but our name is going to stay the same, and we're not moving as on my watch anyways it's like we're gonna stay where we are um, but we offer pregnancy tests ultrasounds STD testing and treatment we have um, we do parenting classes which is an earn while you learn so these girls we have a boutique for them to shop in but we want them to, to earn that and by that we're doing the parenting classes and there it's all done online so they can do it straight from their phone and um, we make it as easy as possible for them we have a diaper punch program so once a month for a year they can come in and get some diapers and wipes 
Um, so we don't ask them to just choose life. You know, we come alongside them for the first year of life and just and help them any way we can. Um, we recently went mobile this past March, and it was just on my heart that we have to meet people where they are. We have to be the hands and feet of Jesus. We got to go get these girls. Um, so, and I had been staying, so the Lord had to rebuke me. We got the mobile, un the mobile unit in March, and I had been staying in Fort Smith. I'd been keeping it playing it safe because, well, I didn't have the staffing or whatever, and it was just easier. Um, but he told me I was in church and I was worshiping and he'll always drop something in my spirit. And he said, stop fishing from the bank and go to the deep. I was like, okay. <laughs> and again, you be, you're obedient to him. I told him that I was gonna be the hands and feet of Jesus, but what was I doing? I was just staying in my hometown where I was not effective. Um, and so we went to Greenwood. The first time that we went to Greenwood, we saw 11 girls in four hours went back we saw five girls in four hours then we saw 12 girls in four hours and it's just continued to grow and every time we go the girls show up but when I was staying in my hometown I was being ineffective and no one was showing up and I was like oh well next time we we'll just have to be consistent and I was making all these excuses um, but I can tell you every girl that walks through our door whether it's um, our facility on Grand or whether it's that mobile unit we pray with these girls. We share the gospel with them. Um, because if we can save the mom, we, then we're saving the baby too. It's that, like I said, it's that saving that generation. Um, because Jesus can do mighty things. Um, and we don't just want her to choose life. And then this baby is, what kind of a situation is this baby going to be in? But through Christ, he can do all things. And so he can change some things. And so... It's just about planting seeds and praying over them and sharing Jesus with them. And so that's our, at the end of the day, that's our goal. We just want to lead them to Jesus. Um, in your center, uh, do you have resources like clothing for moms or any help like that? Um, so we're not really big enough to, to have clothes for, for the moms, too. So we have clothing for the babies up to 24 months. We do have what we call like a mom's corner. And so that they can come in and get, we've got some, like they can get some books or we've got some jewelry or some lotions, you know, just something to their socks, you know, just something little that they can get mm -hmm. to with their points if they want okay. to. But um, okay. it's another vision is to to grow a little bit, maybe take the boutique offsite um, and be able to offer clothing for the for the mamas too, maybe some maternity clothes or and offer clothing past 24 months because these mamas come in, they don't just have the one baby that they're about to have. A lot of times they've got three, four, five other kids that they're trying to support. So right. if we could offer that, that would be amazing. So it's a long, long term goal. Um, <laughs> I'm not a girl, I've never had a baby. I did marry a girl and we have a child together. He He's wears a beard now and he'll be 31 okay, yeah. next month right yeah. and uh so let's say that i a man in a relationship and there is a pregnant woman and they're not married or maybe they are married in their circumstances do y'all help men in any way we do have a men's ministry and that's something that we are that we're trying to grow um a lot of times the men will come in on the first visit and that's it um, and if that woman is abortion minded, it's usually because, you know, he, the guy's the first responder. So, and who's the first one that she tells that she's pregnant? It's the guy. And if he says, you need to have an abortion, that's exactly what she's going to do. So, um, we try to have a guy there, but that needs to grow. We need to have, I, I'm looking for volunteer men to be able to come to the center. And it's, it's not glamorous. You just kind of got to hang out until, and hopefully that guy comes in. Um, but just to minister to that guy, because since Roe v. Wade went into effect, what have we told the guys? You know, it's none of your business, shut your mouth or whatever. But then they think that it's okay to have an abortion. So mm -hmm. we've just got, there's so much mindset that we have to change. Amen. Good. Thank you for sharing all the information. Yeah. And if you have more questions, they'll be here after service. If you're online today and you have questions, uh, you can send a text to our church cell phone, 479-522-0172. Any question you have, it'll be kept private. And uh, possibly there's a lady today that's here online. And yeah. uh, you have a need in your life. And we want to see that need met. And 
we'll share that with Christy and her staff and put you in touch with them. And uh, they, can, they can do what they do best. Amen. And that's minister in this need. So thank you so much thank for being for here today. God bless you. Let's say thank you. Come on. Those of you online that are with us right now, why don't you just on Facebook say thank you, Christy, and uh, let them know and, uh, that we are thankful for what they do. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. How's everybody doing? Well, we're way early. When we do the online services like this, we usually try to shorten them, but it's my turn now, and we've got 45 minutes. So sit back and put your seatbelt on. I'm kidding. The... Uh, uh, I would like to share, I prepared some things, some of it is a little bit of duplication of what Christy said, but how many of them understand, all of our teachers know this, that are in the school system and in the church, uh, uh, essence, uh, repetition is the essence of learning, so it doesn't hurt to hear it again, right? Right. We are also going to make a few posts on our Facebook page, uh, the portion that we're sharing will be there. We always have our full service there, but we're going to modify with her presentation so you have a shorter way to look at that without the full worship service. So if you want to share that, we encourage you to go to our page and share that. It'll be up before long this afternoon. They get right on that, and it'll be out there, and it has to rend and all that kind of stuff. So, Lord, I want to thank you for your love, your compassion. Father, for all of us, Lord. And Lord, today, there's a cry deep within our spirit. Oh, Lord, for the, for the unborn. And to be a child in the womb today is a very dangerous place for some children, God. And I'm asking, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts just like Christie's story. Lord, you spoke to her heart clearly, and God, you have placed her on a platform so that she can be used in the kingdom for such a time as this. And Lord, I pray that Holy Spirit move upon all our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I ask that you uh, help us to receive this information and let it get in us and be hidden and surrounded by the truth of your word. Thank you, Father. Lord, we believe for good. We believe for change. We believe that you're a mighty God, and we honor you today in Jesus' name. Yesterday, January 22, was the 49th anniversary of Roe v. Wade. Our U.S. Supreme Court made this decision, and I'm going to read what they ruled the Constitution of the United States protects a pregnant woman's liberty to choose to have an abortion without excessive government restriction. It is important for all of us to understand the challenges of this court case and its impact on families, communities, the church at large. At the Bridge Church, we believe in the freedoms of a mother with all of our heart. But we also believe in the freedom of the unborn as well and the family that surrounds the unborn in these situations. On Friday of this week, thousands of people attended the walk, the march at Washington, D.C., a march for life in D.C. There's never been a greater opportunity for pro-life Americans to make a difference for the unborn. Possibly you've been involved in this area, but I've been praying and asking the Holy Spirit to do something in our hearts that will get reignited and produce a fire and a passion in our Christian lives to do something for the unborn. We have witnessed numerous legal battles play out at the U.S. Supreme Court over the years. Most of those cases has dan have danced around the edges of sanctity of life and abortion issues, addressing matters such as free speech or clinical regulations. Yet the state of Mississippi enacted a pro-life law that directly challenges Roe v. Wade, the opinion which was in, invented a const, the opinion which invented a constitutional right to abortion. 
And if the Supreme Court upholds this state law in the Dobbs versus Jackson William, Women's Health Organization court case, it could mean the demise of that infamous decision. The highest court in our land is expected to decide this summer, as Christie said, the Dobbs case. As we know from prior cases, anything could happen between now and the time this decision is released. We're going to pray about that in just a moment. Anything could happen. While it is rare, justices have flipped their position, even on cases of immense importance, only weeks before an announced opinion. Never in my life uh, since this decision has been made have I witnessed an instance like this that is in our nation where the possibility exists to overturn Roe v. Wade decision. I'd like to lead us in prayer. Let me say one more thing. I believe this was birthed in my spirit before we even started Christie. And I, if you see me walk over and grab my notebook off the table, it's because God's speaking to me. And I believe this is fresh out of just a download that he downloaded in me, and I want to share it with everyone. It is the time and season for the body of Christ, the church, to go deeper in God's word, God's presence, and God's will, and not look to world systems like politics or those in any type of power that pushes. But it's time to rest in God, his covenant that is in the earth for humanity, the covenant of Christ going to the cross. Amen. He did everything that needed to be done to help humanity. Thank God for that. And I, I believe that that time right now is we stand in a balance in our nation. It's not about who's president. It's not about what you believe about all this stuff. It's about what is God's will. And God's will is already in his word, and it is completely ordered that everyone in creation is to be honored as a human life. Somebody say amen. That's all right. I want to share three things real quickly, and we're going to close in prayer. We may, we're going to stop and pray here in a moment for the court. It's in the my notes right here. Three things that we as Christians need to do. The first thing we need to do is every Christian can pray. We have a prayer relationship with God, and if you cannot activate yourself at any other level, that's the first and most important thing that you need to do, is on a consistent and regular basis, make you a, whatever is touching your heart about the sanctity of human life. You need to write those things down and make you a personal vision card. And every day you need to take the time to look at that card until it's memorized in your heart. And you can speak forth the things of God over what God stirred you about. As this year begins, I hope and trust you will commit to pray for our leaders. Particularly those making life or death decisions on the Supreme Court as well as any other court that is in our land. It's absolutely crucial that we pray. Amen. Isaiah 9, 6. I want, well, I'm going to go ahead and read the whole verse. For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will be upon his shoulders. We do not depend on the government of our land and this in this nation, this state, this community, but we are in the body of Christ and we operate in God's kingdom and we need to decree and to declare the promises of God's word, the truth. For every promise, there's a condition. We need to know the condition and we need to release the promise in the land. Amen? And God's government from heaven is released in the church and in Christians all over this world. That's how God operates. His purpose, his will, his plan. So I want to challenge you to line up with the government of God and we release that in the earth. As the people of God, we have the authority to pray God's word and kingdom into the earth. 
Our, our U.S. Supreme Court justices are, and I put them in alphabetical order intentionally because this statement is not about politics, but it is about God being honored in our land. Amen? And I'm going to call their eight names, and we'll make a Facebook post page about that too. I'm working in the office right now. Samuel Alito, Amy Coney Barrett, Stephen Breyer, Neil Gorsuch, Alina Kagan, Brett Kavanaugh, Sonia Sotomayor, Clarence Thomas. I'm going to lay my hands on these names on this piece of paper today. I'm asking you to make a point of contact. You could just simply put your hand on your heart and ask God to move on their lives. I'm speaking God's word, God's will that the kingdom government of God will be established in our U.S. Supreme Court. Lord, I've already called out these people's names, and I'm asking for God's government to supersede any man-made government that is in our nation. And I pray for all of these justices to do your will and follow your word. And Lord, if they have decided against your will, your way, your word, then I come against that and I take authority over darkness and deception and I command darkness to turn your hands off of these people. We respect them, what they represent, their training, uh, their person. We honor our court system, but we're asking for the will of God to be done in the earth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The first thing we can do is pray. The second thing, we need to provide help and get involved. Find a local pregnancy resource center to, to volunteer in. You need to influence your local, state, and federal elected officials. That's what we do. We are people who vote. If you are a non-voting Christian, I'm going to ask you to seriously consider and ask the Lord to put a desire in your heart to vote God's word in this land. Amen? If every Christian would stand up and the name, everybody that names themselves a Christian would stand on the promises of God's word and vote his will, his way, according to the word, you say, well, pastor, I don't know how that works. I can help you theologically. That's what I do, right? I can show that to you in the word, what God believes, okay? And everything, not just about abortion in our land, but about every law that is out there. And there are a lot of great voter guides that do not choose a political party, amen, but they choose principles from God's word and they grade them by the issues that need to be voted on in a particular voting season, amen. It's real simple. If you don't know how to do that, we'll, as it gets closer to the midterm election, I'll be, I'll be advising and bringing those guides, amen. Okay, let me find my place here. Uh, we need to affect our elected officials. They are there to represent us. We are not here to finance their agenda. That's the way our Constitution is set up. And just because you're a Christian does not mean that you have to bow to that. Amen? Amen. Coordinate with your church leaders to get your church activated for the Walk for Life. You didn't talk about that. That's coming up April 16, the Saturday before Easter. And uh, we'll talk more about our church and that kind of thing, because they're, they're, they're calling me, right? <laughs> Karen Jones is one of your volunteers, and I say, so let's remember to talk. I hadn't thought about that till just now, but we'll talk about that. So what can we do? We can pray. We can provide help. Possibly, I hope that there are some men that have God's ear this morning. And I, I've been in the center. It is a beautiful place. They have a beautiful facility. When, when you, before you even get to the property, there, that's, there's an epicenter of what God's doing in our city right there. And there's a peace there. And you, you know, in your prayer time, you can pray for it to have an anointing on it to draw the people who need help to draw them into that place. Now, I don't know exactly how they set this up for men to volunteer. I'm sure we would need to be trained where we could do that. But I see, because they may not want a man sitting out in the foyer. I don't know. That may be good or bad or whatever. I don't know. But I, I've been there, and there may be a place, I know there is in the back, where you could sit there, read your Bible, pray over the center while you're there until a man comes in that needs help. Okay, now that's a man view. 
but it's her view that's going to count how they do that, okay? Uh, so we provide help. The next thing we need to do is we need to partner as the church community with the pregnancy help centers in our area so that they receive what they need. You can raise money, have a garage sale. You could donate supplies that they need. Every once in a while, they'll send an alert out. And usually before the ink is dry on the computer, somebody's coming to your rescue. And, and, and that might be diapers they need or wipes. It could be whatever it is. They have a need. And, and as a community, we need to respond to that. Uh, never let us neglect to start and end the day on our knees for the sinners crying out to God for truth to prevail, for innocent lives to be saved, and for the kingdom of God to advance. It is not God's will that abortion is legal in our nation. Now, I just rock the secular world, but I'm just telling you what the Bible says, okay? That is the basis of God's word. Now, what does that mean? Boy, you can stand up there as a man and say that. You're not going to have a baby. Well, I'm going to say it like this. This is what I know, is God can help any of us in any situation we're in if we'll turn our heart to the Lord and ask him for his help, period. And that's the main thing. If you've had an abortion, our heart is broken with you. Uh, I'll probably share this next Sunday, just the three things, but one of the Duck Dynasty Robert, Robertsons, uh, one of the ladies there had had an abortion. Later, she came to Christ. And she tells in her presentation, there were three things that they told her in the abortion clinic that, they, that she believed, and there were lies. Three lies that they told her. And I think we need to be aware of that. I'm not going to take the time today. I'm going to ask those in the room, if you could come up. Uh, I can't see in the dark with the light. Uh, it's Aaron is who I'm looking for. Aaron, if you could come up or just the whole team, it, either one's fine. Do whatever you need to do. But I just need a, as we close today, there's a few things I want to pray for and I need some atmosphere in the room. Lord, I, I lift up to you the needs of our community for any uh, woman that uh, was not planning to be pregnant and they're trying to decide what to do, Lord. And for any man that is involved in that, Lord, there are women that have um, been raped Father, and they're trying to decide in that, that pregnancy what to do. There are those that face medical issues, Lord. And God, I, I'm just asking that you minister to the women in our community and help them to sense, feel, and know your love and the love that is in the church and in the sinners that are there to help them specifically with these needs. Father God, I'm, 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 I'm asking you to heal the brokenhearted. Jesus Isaiah prophesied this church and it was released to Jesus when he went into the temple for the first time to minister in Luke 4, 18. He declared that he would heal the brokenhearted. He's here for you today. So if you're online and you've had an experience, uh, whatever it is your experience it is, Jesus is here today to heal broken hearts. Thank you, Father. Lord, we release you to do your ordained work, Holy Spirit, in the hearts and lives of of people. Thank you, Father God. Lord, I'm asking you, never had this thought, but Lord, we're going to need lots of people in the church for foster care, for adoption of babies, to help children be raised, God. What I see in my spirit for the next generation is when these children are rescued, we are impacting Christianity locally in our state, in our nation, and in our world, the next generation can come up being taught about every deed, every great work that God has ever done. And we pray for the next generation that they would not die in the womb in Jesus' name, but God, you'd reverse this curse that is on our land. Your word says to pray and ask you to heal our land, and we're asking for healing, Lord. So, Lord, whether it be changing our mind about something that we did not know we've been exposed to, or, Lord, if it's uh, something in our heart that's got us hung up, we're asking, Lord, that you would set us free so that we can get on the trail of your will in this nation, in the states of Arkansas and Oklahoma, in the River Valley, Lord, we ask for an epicenter 
of your truth to rise up from the church, Lord, even from these words, and move mightily in our land, in the River Valley specifically. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I speak to every storm, every trouble that people are facing, and I speak to it like Jesus spoke to the storm. I command peace be still in Jesus' name. Now, I really sense in my heart today that God is speaking to some people. None of that was really, but I sense he's doing that right now. And I'm just asking Holy Spirit to do his best work in your heart. And I'm asking you to respond. Remember the message recently that I preached about Mary and her response to being going to get pregnant by the Holy Spirit. And she said to the angel Gabriel, be it unto me according to your word. And his word was, she's favored. You are the favored one. The Lord is with you. And you may not be having an issue this morning in this particular area, but you're facing something right now and you need God to move in your situation. I release God to flow. You just call upon the Lord right now. He will save you in your situation. Just call upon him right now and ask him to help you. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name for your goodness. Mm, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Lord, we love you today and we honor you. We honor you, Lord. And we thank you for your goodness, your love, your mercy, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, I trust those of you, I've noticed, and we expected this. This is no shock. But some of you have wandered in thinking we were having regular church, and you're welcome. I'm not saying any of you have to leave or don't come back. Uh, but we, yesterday, our elders made a decision to go to online church because of the Omicron variant. And it's so easily transmitted from person to person. And there's, there's a range of symptoms and how bad it is for some people. There are people going in the hospital and dying. So I want to just say to our church, let's operate in wisdom. And um, we're, I don't know what we're going to do. I'm looking for elders around me. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know what we're going to do next Sunday. We'll send a mass text out and email like we did yesterday. Um, uh, I, I, there are people going to say, I can't believe Pastor Preston did this. He has no faith. <laughs> you know what? It takes more faith to stop having service than it does to have service. But I have a pastor's heart, and my job is to protect the sheep. Amen. And uh, the, the spreaders happen in large crowds, uh, closed, you know, closed, enclosed restaurants, going to school, right? Being around people who have been exposed. So I'm encouraging everybody, there's no shame in getting uh, a COVID test. They're readily available in our county. You can go by the health center and get them. And if there's a possibility, I'm, I'm concerned about you personally being having sickness and overcoming that. But more than that, we become spreaders when we don't test and we're around other people. And I'm asking you to be wise and don't, if you're having any of symptoms, some people say the symptoms are so mild. I'm talking about in the same house. This one wasn't too bad. Another one, they were down. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm not giving any glory to disease. Jesus destroyed all that on the cross. That was his job, right? Death, hell, and the grave were destroyed at the resurrection. Somebody say amen. So that's our position, but we're looking out for people as pastors and we want to do what's right. And uh, the other thing is, is communicate with our church. Text one of anybody that you can get information to us. We are a praying church. We pray all the time, every day. We have a specific prayer meeting called Upper Room on Wednesday nights. That we pray. We're there to pray. Now the word is shared, but we release from that room. And it's, it's the epicenter of the church. Amen? It's not my preaching. It's not Aaron's worship leading, is it? <laughs> I know his heart. And it's not anybody else here. It's not from us. But prayer is the epicenter of God bringing change. Father God, I pray for the River Valley. I'm asking you to cause our COVID test positives to go down in the River Valley in Jesus' name. 
By your authority, I'm asking you to sweep through this valley and heal those who have any symptoms, whether it be great or small. There are several, Lord, that are on my heart that their situation is not the best. And we're asking for immediate change in their body in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, I release uh, comfort for all. And I'm asking God that you would stir our hearts to be wise and to care more about others than we do ourselves. Lord, I think your word says that. To prefer our brethren, Father. To prefer our friends, Father. So, Lord, help us to do what's right. And, Lord, I ask, Lord, that some way, somehow, whatever business might be suffering from this, I'm asking you to bless that business. Lord, do something to help them, to keep their doors open, to make a profit, and to be successful in their business. I pray for the health care workers that are overwhelmed in this region. I'm asking, Lord, to send relief in our hospitals. In Jesus' name. Help them and give them strength, Lord, and encourage the workers. Thank you, Father. Hmm. Most of all, Lord, we love you today and we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said amen, amen. God bless you, those in the room. Those online, God bless you for being here today. Please send us information if you need prayer, any of the above. We're here to, to serve you and to pastor you and to be there for you in whatever season you're in. So let us know if you need anything. Amen. For our care pastors that are listening, check on your people under your care. Make sure they're okay. Let us know any prayer requests that you have are fine. And let's just stay closely knit as a local body. Amen. And uh, love one another and minister to one another. Let's stand all over the room. God bless you for being at the Bridge Church today. We're glad that you're in the room and online. And uh, we want to encourage you, if you have your offering today, there are buckets here on the platform, and there are two tithe and offering boxes by the doors where you exit, and you can place your giving in there. We thank you for it. Thank you for your support for our church. You're an amazing church. You love the Lord. You love his house. You love its leaders, and you're giving people, and I'm thankful to pastor that kind of church. So y'all have a great day and a blessed week. If you need anything, let us know. God bless you. You're dismissed. start sticking copies in your mailbox, but that's a federal offense. Yeah, never hear about that much. Yeah, it's because nobody, nobody gets mail. Except for junk.
sold they sold you out, didn't they? Fooled them, they think you already gave money. <laughs> 